Graphene, a wondrous material that can change the world. If only we could manufacture it on a commercial scale. Well, researchers at MIT think they've come up with a solution. I'm Zach, this is Zach DTV, and we're gonna take a look at this. Graphene is an atomically thin layer of carbon atoms that lay out in a pattern very similar to chicken wire or a chain link fence. However, graphene has a lot of properties that make it a lot more special than just some chicken wire. Things like it's stronger than steel. Two layers of it is strong enough to stop a bullet. That's impressive, but it's also an electrical conductor and it can be an electrical insulator. On top of all that, it's also see-through. This is a miracle material that has unlimited uses, it seems. The downside to graphene has been production. I mean, just imagine how hard it is to produce a film that is one atom thick and keep consistent quality while you're doing it. The most common form of manufacture up until this point has been CVD. That's chemical vapor deposition. And that is a system where you use a CVD reactor, you place your copper layer in the bottom, and then you pump in methane and hydrogen gas. With the right pressure requirements and heat requirements, it will grow a layer of graphene over the top of your copper substrate. And while this means the production is fine for making small batches to use in the lab for experiments and testing, it is in no way commercially viable to bring this to market. But that's where John Hart and his team from MIT stepped in with their new method for manufacturing massive amounts of high quality graphene. They detail their findings in a paper printed in Applied Materials and Interfaces. And in this paper, they detail the steps they took to manufacture graphene at an industrial continuous level. And their setup employs a roll-to-roll -roll manufacturing process, which is a common process for industrial manufacturing of thin rolls of foil. And they still employ the CVD technique to manufacture their graphene. The system has two spools, which are connected by two separate tubes. The copper foil is inserted into one tube, where it moves through the furnace. It comes around and into the second tube where researchers insert their special ratio of methane and hydrogen gas, which are then deposited onto the copper sheet to start growing graphene. And according to John Hart, the graphene starts forming in little islands, and then those islands grow together to form a continuous sheet. By the time it's out of the oven, the graphene should be fully covering the foil in one layer, kind of like a continuous bed of pizza. Now, after the graphene-laden copper leaves the furnace, it's rolled onto a second spool. It's still not quite ready for use yet. It still has to be cast with a polymer mesh, and then they etch the copper away from it. That polymer mesh is there to keep all the pores open in the graphene and keep it from rolling up as the copper is etched away. When they tested their new membrane by putting salt water through it, they found that not only did it filter out the molecules as it should have, but it withstood the same pressures that traditional graphene can. So the manufacturing technique is a success. They found that this technique could produce high quality graphene at five centimeters per minute for what they think is as long as necessary. Their longest run lasted almost four hours and produced a sheet of graphene 10 meters long. And like Hart mentions in the paper, in a factory, this would be running 24 seven. Now in these tests, they ran the machine at varying speeds and pumped in different amounts of the gases needed to produce the graphene. They found that they could tune the size of the holes in the graphene to filter out everything from helium all the way to radioactive isotopes. They could manufacture graphene used for electronics or fine mesh membranes. Now their machine was only working with one centimeter wide strips of copper film but this is completely scalable and they believe that you would be able to manufacture with as wide of a piece of film as you need. Now Hart did mention that going forward, they're going to look for a way to integrate the casting of that polymer onto the films as just part of an automated production cycle, but they do believe this machine provides the pathway to true commercialization. Now I have to say, I think this is pretty cool, but let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this episode, click that like button. And if you're new here, click subscribe so you know when I put out something new. Videos are out Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, pretty much. So I hope to see you here again soon. Until next time, though, just have fun and be safe.